It's a gloriously easy thing to picture. A seaplane with long, thin winds sweeping above a landscape darkened by the shadows of a passing cloud. Ahead lies a vast lake, its shimmering surface gently reflecting the light of the orange skies. Yet this isn't an ordinary image. It's no snapshot of some long-ago flight undertaken here on Earth. That lake, you see, isn't a normal lake filled with water. Rather, it's a dark sea of hydrocarbons, unaccountable gallons of ethane lapping at the frozen shores. Nor are the orange skies a product of some spectacular sunset, but rather of the colossal levels of methane in the thick atmosphere, an atmosphere roughly four times denser than our own. An atmosphere that belongs, not to our world, but to Saturn's moon Titan. A moon that the Titan air seaplane may one day jet across, hunting for biosignatures. Recently selected for Phase 1 funding by NASA, Titan Air is a groundbreaking concept for exploring extraterrestrial seas. Designed to sample both atmosphere and surface liquids, it could soon be blasting off on the most spectacular mission of all. A mission that, just maybe, could end with the discovery of alien microbial life. At first glance, the artist's impressions of Titan Air don't look particularly special. About the size of a Cessna airplane, it could be mistaken for any number of craft owned by amateurs in places like Florida, a dinky thing that weighs about 900 kilograms and sports a wingspan of 10 meters. No, it would only be when you started to look closer that this particular seaplane would begin to show its weird side. For starters, you might notice that the wings are inflatable, a side effect of needing to be folded up and stowed on its long interplanetary voyage. Or hey, maybe it would be the lack of pilot space that you'd twig to, or the dense suite of scientific instruments packed on board. Either way, it wouldn't take long for you to realize that this was no regular seaplane. Known as a Laker, it's designed for landing not off the coast of some exclusive beachside retreat. In fact, it's not designed for landing on liquid water at all. Instead, it's designed to touch down on seas made of liquid hydrocarbons. Seas so unbelievably cold that any human stepping onto them would suffer the same fate as the D-1000 after its encounter with liquid nitrogen. Are you ready to unlock your creativity and take your skills to the next level? Well, look no further than Skillshare, today's sponsor. It's a learning community that's all about inspiring discovery through creativity. With thousands of online courses and a vibrant community of creative minds, Skillshare is the place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. They believe in making a creative life possible for everyone around the world. So, what makes Skillshare unique? Well, they've got it all from illustration, graphic design, and photography to music, marketing, and productivity. Plus, their world-class community connects teachers and members offering inspiration and feedback from like-minded creatives. And here's the best part. Skillshare believes in the learn-by-doing approach, so you can create and share your projects after completing a class. And don't worry about rushing. With Skillshare's on-demand platform and stackable lessons, you can learn at your own pace, no matter your skill level. Personally, recently, I've been looking at Peggy Dean's ChatGPT for creatives. I've been talking to ChatGPT and using her course for to talk to it better. Uh, if you get what I mean, and it's something that I've been doing a lot because I find, like, coming up with titles and stuff, you can chat with ChatGPT and it helps you get better titles and ideas for YouTube and pretty much anything else. So if you're ready to dive in, the first thousand people to use my link in the description below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So don't wait, join now, and let your creativity run wild. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring, and now back to today's video. This has even affected the naming as the research team behind Titan Air summed it up as this. The flyer will land on the seas of Titan like a flying boat, except boat implies water, and on Titan, the lakes are made of methane. So we're calling it a flying laker. But surviving temperatures so cold that they'd give brass monkeys nightmares is only one of the challenges that the Laker will face. As it flits between Titan seas, known as mares, it will be trying to capture and store some of those liquid hydrocarbons, sending them to an onboard integrated suite of next generation instruments that will study them for biomarkers. Likewise, it will try to absorb moisture from Titan's clouds, maybe even fly directly through an alien rainstorm to see what's tumbling toward the moon's icy surface. 
In doing so, it will face strong headwinds. The nitrogen winds that blast across Titan can reach gale forces at certain times of the year, and it's not like there's going to be a human pilot on board to make quick course corrections, or, well, any human input at all. With light taking 80 minutes to reach Titan from the Sun, the Laker will simply be too far from the Earth for NASA to have any hope of steering it. That means those tough conditions will have to be endured while it essentially flies on automatic. At its most extreme, that might include the craft staying airborne for an hour before conducting a landing, then getting close enough to the shoreline to extract samples using a drill embedded in its wingtips. In other words, it's a highly complex operation with uncountable points of potential failure. Thankfully, the team behind Titan Air don't have to worry about pulling off such a flight just yet. Awarded Phase 1 funding by NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts Program in 2023, Titan Air today is little more than a bit of a dream. An outline on a drawing board that may or may not offer a blueprint for the future. It's the job of this $175,000 NIAC grant to figure that out. With a team headed by former Boeing engineer Quinn Morley, they've certainly got the talent to try and make this a reality. Now, we'll come on to Morley's exact plan for Titan Air in Chapter 3 a little bit later on. But before we get there, we need to answer a really important question. Why does NASA want to explore Titan in the first place? Looked at one way, the distant moon of Titan appears to be one of the most inhospitable places in the solar system. With surface temperatures at a bone-cracking minus 179 Celsius, the ground is so cold that water ice becomes like granite, freezing into boulders and jagged mountains. Above, a suffocatingly thick, smog-like atmosphere presses down, one that's roughly 95% nitrogen to 5% methane. For us Earthlings used to balmy temperatures and things like oxygen, Titan couldn't be more alien, a place so unlike our home that setting foot there would kill us instantly. Yet, seen from another angle, Titan may not be so weird after all. In fact, there's a good argument that it's the most Earth-like body in our solar system. To illustrate, let's turn to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL. On a page dedicated to Titan missions, they note, quote, Titan is an ocean world and the only moon in our solar system with a dense atmosphere which supports an Earth-like hydrological cycle of methane clouds, rain, and liquid flowing across the surface to fill lakes and seas. The hydrological cycle part is key. While other bodies in the solar system, like Jupiter's moons Europa and Ganymede, are home to oceans, they're invariably buried deep beneath the thick ice crust. Only Earth and Titan have stable liquids on their surfaces in the forms of seas, lakes, and rivers. Albeit in Titan's case, seas and rivers made of ethane and methane. Still, the fact that this hydrological cycle exists at all is pretty fascinating, especially when you consider how much money NASA is currently spending to explore long-dead lake beds on Mars, the remains of pools that dried up billions of years ago. Titan, by contrast, has lakes sat on its surface right now that are ready to explore. And they're not small lakes. Kraken Mare is so big it could swallow all of America's Great Lakes combined. With a surface area of around 400,000 square kilometers and a depth of 300 meters, it dwarfs even the Caspian Sea. It also dwarfs all of Titan's other lakes. But that doesn't mean only Kraken Mare is of interest. Alongside this and other mares, there are dozens of smaller lakes, plus streams, channels, deltas, and great rushing rivers that cascade over the landscape. A veritable water world watched over by towering dunes of dark hydrocarbons. This only gets more interesting when you discover just what those dunes are made of. As the Planetary Society notes, the chief component of these dunes are something known as tholins, which fall like snow from Titan's orange skies. As their page on Titan goes on to describe, quote, Those tholins could be the building blocks of life, if it is possible to base life on liquid methane and ethane instead of water. In other words, it's possible a form of life unlike anything we've ever encountered could have evolved within this hydrological cycle, just as life evolved in the lakes and the seas of Earth. Now, before you go running off to grab your TARDIS and giant fishing net, though, we should qualify that statement. Just because it's possible that some strange form of life has evolved on Titan doesn't mean that it necessarily has. As we've said on similar videos before, somewhere being inhabitable does not mean it is inhabited. 
That being said, the Titan Air team thinks it's worth investigating. To quote their white paper, in the wake of Cassini Huygens, many questions about the complex and possibly prebiotic chemistry of Titan's atmosphere and lakes remain unanswered. Some of these open questions provide a compelling case for the existence of weird life. And that's why Titan Air will spend so much time flying between the moon's different seas, on the off chance that some hitherto unimagined form of life has evolved there. So what might that life look like? Well, calling it weird would definitely be a bit of an understatement. No, I've actually done a video on Titan on another channel that I do called Geographics, and in that video we discussed how local life forms might inhale hydrogen and exhale methane. We also discussed how the exceptionally low temperatures in Titan's lakes might lead to something as bizarre as a microorganism that doesn't even have cell membranes, a theory proposed in a 2020 research paper. Still, even if it turns out that Titan is as dead as Bruce Willis at the end of the sixth sense, spoiler alert, that doesn't mean a mission there can't learn anything. NASA is interested in Titan precisely because its thick, methane-heavy atmosphere is thought to be very similar to Earth some 3.8 billion years ago. Studying it may in turn give us clues about how life evolved here on our world. So that's the why part of why should we explore Titan. Now comes the part that we know you guys like, the how. As always, the answer lies in some pretty inspired engineering. So, if you're trying to picture how liquid collection is done on an alien world, you might be imagining something like a vacuum tube to suck up moisture, or perhaps some sort of giant scoop that can be skimmed across the surface of the lake. But that's not remotely what Quinn Morley and the Titan Air team have in mind. Rather, they want to design a plane that can drink liquid through its skin. In their official press release, the team described a future in which simply flying the lake through a rain cloud or touching down on the surface of one of these mares would automatically lead to samples being drawn inside for analysis. And while they outlined three possible methods for doing this, the one the science press picked up on was easily the most interesting. Using biomimicry of water collecting cacti on Earth. The idea is that the leading edge of the Lakers' long, thin wings would be filled with what Universe Today described as passive capillary features. These capillaries are how cacti on Earth quickly draw in water after rainfall, absorbing the moisture inside themselves. It's also how fast-acting paper towels absorb so much liquid after you spill something in the kitchen. And you might wonder, why are we mentioning paper towels right now? Well, that's because that seems to be exactly where lead researcher Quinn Morley got his idea from. On a LinkedIn post, the engineer recounted watching his wife clear up a cranberry juice spill using wax paper. Rather than absorb the liquid, the wax paper instead distributed it evenly across the entire refrigerator shelf. According to Morley, this image joined another already swimming around in his head, the zero-g cup astronaut Don Pettit invented in 2008 to drink his morning coffee in microgravity. This was a cup which controlled liquid flow via capillary action. It seems that this cranberry juice spill and that image of Don Pettit chilling with his capillary cup was enough to spark a flash of inspiration. It was the Titan Air equivalent of Isaac Newton watching the apple fall, or H.P. Lovecraft witnessing his family get eaten by shoggoths. The best part of the capillary idea? It'd be essentially automatic. All Titan Air would have to do is collect condensed methane moisture on its wings and the design would draw it into the onboard science chambers. Their complex analysis would be carried out, including a search for any markers of organic life, with the results being transmitted back to Earth at regular intervals. Proving this technology is essentially what led to NASA awarding the team a Phase 1 grant. All the other parts, the flying, the appearance of the craft, are just placeholders, something the team can change at a later stage if there appears to be a better way of doing things. Still, there are good reasons to assume that any future version of Titan Air will still travel via flight. The main one is how easy getting airborne on Saturn's greatest moon appears to be. The atmosphere is so thick and the gravity so weak that you could literally strap wings to your arms, flap them, and lift off into the sky, which sounds pretty fun. As Morley told Universe Today, that makes it about 27 times easier to achieve powered flight on Titan than on Earth, all while using about 20 times less power. Of course, 
there are also downsides, a major one being that the heat generated by Titan Air's nuclear battery might make landing on the moon's lakes a dicey adventure. Per the official press release, the plane could even land on lakes made of methane, but may sizzle as the heat from its nuclear battery liberates dissolved nitrogen from the sea as it floats along. Which may be one reason why Titan Air isn't the only project to receive grant money to put a flying ship on Titan. Since the mid-2000s, scientists and engineers have been pitching a kaleidoscope of different approaches. Given that this video is about a hypothetical flying ship visiting Titan, it's probably surprising that we've left it this late to talk about the real flying ship that will soon visit Titan. Dragonfly is one of NASA's coolest upcoming missions, an eight-bladed rotorcraft that will fly over the Saturnian moon like a drone hunting for the basic building blocks of life. Currently due to launch in 2027, it will arrive at Titan in 2034 for a 32-month mission that should see it cover more distance than any other craft has ever covered on an alien world. But while Dragonfly is awesome enough to probably warrant its own video, it's also suited best to studying Titan's solid surface. NASA's page on this probe makes it clear that its main targets will be landing on hydrocarbon dunes and at the bottom of deep craters. That's why NASA is still commissioning more studies on future craft, because the dream for a Titan mission isn't one that can investigate only solid ground or only the atmosphere or just the mares and lakes. Rather, it's one that can do all three. Hence, previous grants awarded to ideas such as the Titan submarine, a 2015 proposal for a craft that would cruise through the ink-dark liquid hydrogens of Craig and Mare investigating its hidden depths, or the 2014 and 2017 proposals for the Titan aerial draft craft, which would fly across the atmosphere as a rotor-equipped balloon drinking in the nitrogen-rich air. There was even another airplane idea pitched back in 2012, although it never got funded. Known as Aviator, it was intended to soar high above the surface to reveal Titan's secrets. The hope with Titan Air, what makes it interesting enough for us to cover, is that it will be able to combine the best of all of those three proposals. That means flying often enough to investigate the dense orange atmosphere. It means, hopefully, coming equipped with a drill bit for sampling the frozen shores. And while it doesn't mean diving beneath the surface of the moon's seas, it does mean drinking in the liquid hydrocarbons and analyzing them for signs of potential life. And it's here that we can finally catch a glimpse of the true potential that Titan Air holds. Right now, over a billion kilometers away from us, a mysterious moon is circling the planet Saturn. A moon that may be hiding a secret so important it could upend everything that we think we know about the universe. Just imagine for a second what it would mean to discover not just alien microbial life, but alien microbial life that works in a completely different way from life on Earth, that thrives in atmospheres we'd consider uninhabitable, that has maybe even evolved in a way that goes beyond our understanding of what life even is. If that happens, well, it's going to be a game changer at a stroke. The number of places in the universe we consider habitable would increase a hundredfold. No longer would liquid water be a prerequisite to microbes evolving. A whole new biology would unfold before us. A whole new way of viewing the universe. Now, of course, we're definitely getting ahead of ourselves here. There might well be nothing living in the lakes of Titan. Equally, the Titan Air Laker might never get beyond that phase one funding stage. Still. We do think it's important to highlight these projects, even when they're in their infancy. Because, make no mistake, it's these experimental, long-shot projects that will, one day, lead to a breakthrough that most of us can't even imagine. If not in the seas of Titan, then maybe on the ice fields of Enceladus, or high in the clouds of Venus. We can only hope that when this at last happens, we'll still be around to make the videos that marvel over it.